So based on uh, what we have covered so far, we talked about variables, data types, operators, data type modifiers, qualifiers, you name it. Okay, and this is what we had so far. So let's just test it in a project. Create a new project and we call it assign. So I think we'll be adding to it so that we can see how it works. So let's just test what I have. But chances are there is something that I missed. I'm sure we can. Right, let's just check if there are any missing elements. I think we should be fine. Let's run it and see. Ah, perfect. So it works. It definitely works, but it doesn't show what we've got there. How best can I display what is there? Okay, I think I've got an idea so that you can see from where you are. And I can also play around with the size. Say word. Okay, there's also another element that I think I misplaced that I didn't realize that would be key. Um, okay, I think this is better. Right, can you see from where you are? Right, so this is what we have done. We created our uh, two values, although we didn't show this. We said the product, we want the product of 20 multiplied by 30, which gives us 600. We want to increment the value of x by 1, which we did not do. We still have 20. We wanted to decrement the value of y by 1, which was 30, and we did not do that, so it then means there is something wrong in our code. Uh, we wanted to change the value of y by one bit. So that one came out right. Because we removed one bit, and one bit from 30 gives us 14. So that we are fine. So if it was the value of x, we would have had a problem. So how do we fix that? We simply come here and we change where plus plus is and minus minus is. Uh, although this might give us an error as well, let's just try and do it in our code. And let's put minus minus there. This might give us an error. Let's just try it out. Okay, it actually worked. It actually worked. So, this is also another way you can learn because you are supposed to do your screenshot, I mean your dump screen. This is what we call a test dump screen, what we've got there. And I'll show you how I did it in my work. I simply went to insert, I go to screenshot, I then select the dump screen, and then it's actually pasted here. So I corrected the code, and this is what we've got. So we are saying our product is 30 multiplied by 20, 
which gives us 600, so that's now fine. The value of y increment, it was 20, we added 1, so we are fine. The value of y decrement was 30, we subtracted 1, we've got now 29, so it's fine. The value of y by 1 bit, which then meant from 30, we then get to 40. So in other words, we are done. So how will you be assessed? You just be assessed by actually creating this uh, code and making sure that it runs the way you have been requested to make it run. So because of that now, you would have your working code. And our code would need us to create something that does the following, right? So in essence, I think this one and that one, or to use a control statement, I think this pretty much works hand in hand. So we can try and combine this into one. Uh, element and then assigns values to two variables. We've also worked with this, but we would want to actually put a slight twist to it, right? So we want to assign a value to two variables, okay? And then we want to get the remainder of two numbers, okay? So this then means now we can create a project based on that, and we call it numbers, like that. And then we'd want to create what it tells us, or what our system is telling us. Okay, we want to have variable, which can be int j and k, these become our values. And we then want to work with the first section, which is we want to compare two numbers or to use a control statement. Okay? So we'd want to state that j is equal to 10 and k is equal to 12. So from there, we want to compare the two numbers. So we'll say if j is less than k, else print if J is less than K. And then we want a print F to state that K is greater than J. Like that. So that means uh, we've got our comparison where we are comparing the value of j and the value of k, and our operator is that one. So we would have answered the control statement and would have answered the loop statement. So this then becomes, compares two numbers and uses a control. Compares two numbers and uses a control statement. So this is what it will look like. Okay. Then the next one would be our assigns values to two variables. Okay. So we want to assign operator. We want to assign values to 
two variables. Okay, so we can do it in different ways. We can then say j is equal to 50. Okay, we have assigned a value for j. We can also say print printf so that we tell the user what we want to do. And we say enter new value like that. So we have a scan if percentage D ambassand K. Okay. So in other words, we then want to give the values for J and K. So print if would be as follows. J equals percentage D and K equals percentage D. We put a new line, a comma, we put a J, we put a K. So, in this particular case, we would have done something, but what we would have done might not be adequate enough to answer our question. So, our question should be to assign two values. So, scan if definitely assigns, but it's not an operator. So, we would actually need to have our operator working in our assignment. Although, if you do it this way, you'll still be able to get the desired result. So let's actually just play, uh, run this code so that we see what it does. So the first part of the code was from line six up to line 15. The second part of the code was from line 16 up to line 20. Okay, let's just run it and see if it's got what we're doing. So we're saying j is less than k, we enter a new value with 96, and we have assigned j to be 50 and k to be 96, so we are good to go. We are definitely good to go. Maybe let's do what we did previously so that we see the output. I know from the back it's a bit difficult to view. So screenshot, so that is our output. So J is less than K and the new value is 96. So J is 50 and K is 96. Okay. That is our code. Yes, I put the new value for K in line 19. But that's what I was actually explaining and saying. Uh, with, with me doing that, I have not actually addressed the assignment aspect of it. So if you do it the same way that you've got at line 19, You'd have assigned it, but uh, you we wanted you to work with operator. Although you can also argue that it's an operator because uh, the moment you put ampersand k, you're also assigning it to the value of k. So it could work as an assignment operator as well. Okay, let's get to the last bit, which is get the remainder of the two numbers, and then we can call it a day. I know you guys are tired from the way we, are, we have been having our lessons. I'll try and do another recording that I'll give to you so that you work with um, during the last few items that you need to do for this course. So we want to get the remainder of two numbers. That's the last one. 
maybe this one I can ask you to help me out. How do we get the remainder of two numbers? So we'd want two numbers. And our numbers in this case is J and K. So we can reassign them and say J is equal to 45. And K is equal to 11. So we now want to get the remi remainder of the two numbers. Alright. So we can put it as follows. Print F Right-click and say remainder equals percentage D, put a new line, put a comma, and then we say J percentage K, like you said. Okay, let's run it. value 34 okay so our remainder is one so we would have answered that question and uh, this is what the code looks like are there any questions Okay, if there are no questions, I think uh, we can end here. Uh, I might need you guys to have a copy of this. So let me just work on the video. I upload it and I send a copy to you guys. Then you can work with it from there.